So you suffer with an L4, L5 disc bulge, an L5, S1 disc bulge, a lumbar disc bulge of any kind, and you're wondering when can you start chiropractic care? That's the topic of the question I got in episode number eight of Ask Dr. Walter Slubro. This series here, it's a new series I just started recently, and what I plan to do is provide content for you, my viewers, from across the world, and thank you for being a part of my channel. And if you're new, do subscribe right now to get this content daily and weekly. But what I wanna do is connect with you a bit more personally and um, answer these questions kind of in an informal setting, as you can see, versus those lecture style videos that I have. And what I'll do is I'm gonna answer a question from the comment section of my videos and upload it on a daily basis. So we're on episode number eight, and if, uh, I'll show you a playlist where you can catch the other episodes later on. Um, and I already have like about three or four or five um, videos already recorded, ready to go up pretty soon, okay? So I'm gonna do this on a daily basis. So let's get right into today's question, episode eight. This is a question from Uday, and it's a great question, and this is what Uday says. When can we visit a chiropractor? MRI shows this bulge and patient is experiencing mild pain. Should one wait for pains to be released or should not wait for that? That's a great question. In fact, uh, the nice thing about chiropractic care is that we can start patients um, with their treatment regardless of their level of pain. And I'll give you some scenarios in my in my experience in my office right here, okay? What you need to understand is a couple things. Number one, the treatment delivered or the adjustments delivered are always gonna be done to your tolerance. They will always be done to the tolerance of the patient. At least that's what I do in my office. And number two, we can accommodate and modify the different adjustment techniques and different treatment techniques to fit the patient, okay? And actually, I wanna add num num one more thing. Number three is that the patient needs to be the right candidate for that type of care that's being proposed. And how is that determined? It's determined through a consultation, examination, um, analysis of x-rays and analysis of posture and also doing a case review in terms of reviewing the various reports or uh, other studies that have been done, like an MRI study and so forth, okay? So having said all that, let me give you some examples. I've had a variety of different patients and we've helped hundreds and hundreds of people in my office with back pain, sciatica, bad posture, scoliosis, disc bulges in the lumbar spine, disc bulges in the cervical spine, numbness and tingling in the legs, numbness and tingling in the hands and feet. A variety of different conditions using chiropractic care, corrective chiropractic technique methods all without surgery and without medication. So um, I've had patients that have come into my office that are disc bulge patients in the lumbar spine with L405 disc bulge or L5S1 disc bulge with excruciating back pain, sacrum pain, excruciating shooting leg pain, difficulty walking, literally being carried in by their family members, sometimes on both um, um, two people like this or on someone's back down the hall into my exam room or into the adjustment room. This is one of my adjustment rooms right over here. I'm sitting on the adjustment table right here. And um, even though they've been in this much pain, they're still able to start chiropractic care and uh, chiropractic adjustments. It doesn't necessarily mean that the area of intense pain in the back area will be adjusted. We can still adjust above and below those segments. Oftentimes that's what I do with my patients after I've evaluated them and knowing that they're the right candidate for my care. So we can still do some things in other parts of the spine and neurologically and biomechanically, they can still find relief. And in fact, a tremendous amount of relief as well, okay? So I've had that scenario, okay? And of course, we need to modify the, the adjustments and visits to fit that person's tolerance. On the other side of the spectrum, we've had patients with all sorts of spinal conditions, including disc bulges, that have had a mild amount of pain. And of course, they're able to start chiropractic care also. And we can be a bit more intense with their adjustments if necessary. Again, always suiting their tolerance um, versus the person that has a tremendous amount of actual pain in the back of the leg. Okay, so just to summarize, as long as there's an appropriate consultation, examination, analysis of x-rays, analysis of posture, neurologic evaluation, biomechanical evaluation, a case review of other studies, and the contraindications are identified, if any, and the person is ruled in or basically determine that they're a good candidate for care, then we can start to care for a patient regardless of the amount of pain they're in. 
and again, always fitting the actual adjustments to accommodate and modify them to their pain tolerance. So um, that's the answer to today's question by Uday. And, and um, if you found that useful, do let me know in the comments below. If you have any other questions, let me know. And your question may be featured next in my next episode of Ask Dr. Walter Slubro. This is a daily video series that I'm putting each and every day. If you like this video series, do let me know by commenting, yes, I like this series. If you're new, subscribe right now. And if you missed some of the other episodes, do go right here right now boom right there there's a playlist we can catch all of the episodes of ask dr walter slubro